Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Cloud Imperium's Chad McKinney, lead gameplay engineer on Star Citizen, has once again been answering the community's questions, taking to the forums to help enlighten us. This is a summary of 14 or so questions he answered over the last couple of days. How are you taking care of yourselves and staying focused on this game's development during these troubled times? There are many different ways the company engages with employees and also each team works a bit different. For example, for the programmers on my team, I have weekly one-on-ones. I did this before the whole pandemic, but it has also been good to continue them, as well as we have the typical daily scrum stand-ups. On top of that, that we have different channels for all the different features in progress as well, and we also try to keep the normal daily banter in off-topic channels so as not to make everything feel so sterile. Is it challenging? Yes. It was much easier for me sitting right next to everyone else and being able to field questions on the spot as opposed to having people trying to ping you from chat or call. It was also much easier to just lean over and show a designer something in the editor instead of trying to wrangle things from screen share, etc. That said, this isn't so different from how we operated before since the company was already highly distributed. I imagine we handled this better than other studios that had previously never had to deal with so much distributed collaboration. Is it intended that you can see all the quantum travel points when spooling your drive without setting a destination? There was definitely a purposeful change for 3.11 with how nav points are locked when you spool. There was a change to how child points were handled so that neighbours points outside of what we call the arrival radius and that was indeed intentional. Think of all the nav points in the solar system as part of a larger tree with the star as the root then the planets, then the moons as children of the planets, etc. There is a rule that you should only be able to see children of the nav point you are at and its direct neighbours. But that said, previously the other children would only be visible within the arrival radius. For the moons, this was mainly how you saw them anyways, but this was a notable difference from the behaviour of planets as the arrival radius is much tighter compared to what we call the adoption radius, the radius that contains all of the nav point children. This is a long-winded way to say, yes, there was an intentional change, but depending on what you're seeing and where in the solar system you are, that may be a bug that's actually slipped through. So if you are seeing all of the possible quantum travel points and the children as well, so all of the moons, uh, that is a uh, potentially a bug, uh, so hopefully they'll fix that. Will we see snacks, food, water or vending machines at outposts? Is it possible? Yeah, this would just need someone to go set up the shops. I can run it by the economy team, said Chad. Uh, will we be able to store snacks in crates or buy in bulk? And this was a little follow-up question. Uh, two things here. One, we can make buying bulk snacks and drinks possible. Yes. Uh, and in fact, I've seen many streamers struggle with needing to manually rebuy so much. So I will bring this up with design. It would not be that difficult to add. Two, there's a separate question here about the representation of those items in the database. Currently in the game, our persistence implementation doesn't support a concept of stacks of items, only stacks of commodities. So, when buying in bulk, it will generate unique items for each unit. However, we will be adding item stacks with the iCache implementation and global persistence. Vehicles despawning after a player spawns three or more of them and vehicle uh, manager app locking when you've spawned a ship. They're big problems that need to be addressed. What, what are they doing to address that? The first part here is actually referring to the 3.11.0 PTU patch, which uh, in the patch notes said that they are um, reducing the amount of vehicles basically a player can spawn from three to two um, without them being cleaned up. Now, Chad said the intention was to make more player ships immune to clean up not less. And if you're seeing ships get cleaned up, then please report it to the issue council. It appears that it was a typo there, so... Um, hopefully that is the case. For the loadout issues, so the vehicle manager app being locked, having players be able to change the loadout of a ship has some very serious runtime implications that the system is not designed to account for. For example, you could modify a ship that is streamed out or very far away from you, or modify a ship in such a way that would cause physics intersections. This does not necessarily mean that you will never be able to do that, 
but for now it is something that can lead to some very bad issues on the server. Cargo decks are coming with Alpha 3.11. Are we going to get new cargo mechanics and gameplay in the near future too? Cargo, as we have it now, is not the long-term implementation goal. There will be more development to the feature set, and though not everything I believe has been announced, I will just leave it with, this is not the end for cargo at this stage. Uh, will we be getting more in-depth systems for player-made contracts? The service beacons are already the beginning of a kind of contract system between players, but down the line there will be further development on what kind of contracts can be created and the fidelity of those contracts. Will depressurization and venting allow you to put out fires or suck people out of airlocks? Will it be a thing? Yes, and in fact most of it is working but currently disabled, awaiting work to be completed on life support systems. Physicalized elevators inside landing zones and space stations, will we see more of them? We've had physicalized elevators for a long time, but we actually introduced teleporting variants to solve an issue about not always wanting to build out the areas to support them as they can be very far away from their destinations, with most of it being not very interesting or notable areas along the way. Or would take art time to make them notable or interesting, but maybe not the best use of art's time. As far as when to use teleporting versus physical variants, ultimately that's up to the landing zone teams and I don't want to speak on their behalf for the reasons for the current distributions or what it might look like in the future. Is there going to be a cleaning system literally for removing dirt and grime from items and components by hand? We have dirt and wear shaders that are used to make things look good and dingy or aged and beat up, which can be dialed back when restoring areas, uh, part of the larger system having to do with the environmental restoration. Now, exactly when and how that will be implemented in a way a player has access to it is a different question. At the moment, we need to be more focused on the higher level systems first. Is there a way to have servers hand over to a fresh server every so often, so to deal with server degradation? What you're describing wouldn't accomplish much, since just swapping to a different instance would make the other instance run the same way. There isn't any concern of heating up or cooling down a server as a limiting factor here, not to mention everything is running virtually in Amazon Web Services. Now, a better question is whether there can be some kind of phasing into tiers of complexity needed for serve meshing instead of just immediately going for the maximal implementation. And the answer to that question is yes, that is possible. Will we lose our stuff when physicalized player inventories go live? No. You don't lose things that would have been entitled to your account when the physical inventory goes live. Now, for normal persistent items, so random stuff in your ship, they will get lost like when they do any persistence database wipe. I do want to make it quite clear, separately from what Chad said there, that they are going to have hard wipes occasionally, which potentially could wipe all your stuff other than the stuff that you'd physically bought on your account. If you paid real money for it, that won't ever be wiped, um, although potentially you could lose it when the game goes fully live and you run out of insurance on it and you don't insure it for some particular reason, um, that's a possibility. So bear that in mind, there will occasionally still be server wipes, however they do try and keep all your um, money and your ships that you've earned in game between the major patches now, so um, take that as it is. How are nested physics grids going? There are ships with elevators with nested grids already, for example the Reclaimer and 600i. As for why some ships are set up one way and others aren't, I'll leave that to the ship content pipeline team to explain later. Is a large proportion of the physics problems in game due to a lack of a good library for coordinate system transformation? And are you working on a system for that? This is not the issue. We have a very simple and well-founded methodology for transforms in various nested coordinate systems built on what we call the zone system. The issues you see are more related to how collision is detected at runtime with the hull defining the physics grid not an issue with the semantic definition of the coordinate systems or transforming between different coordinate systems. And that's it for Chad and his dev response, but what did you think? Are you liking the devs answering questions like this? Have you been playing Alpha 3.11 on the PTU? What questions would you like to ask? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Every month we have a Star Citizen ship giveaway for October 2020. It is for a Mercury Star Runner. 
This highly anticipated multi-role ship is going to be great for small to medium-sized crews that want to do uh, a bit of everything, whether that be cargo running, data running, missions, combat, smuggling, all that sort of jazz. And it's going to be in-game and flyable very soon. All you've got to do to be in for a chance of winning one is comment on any of my videos made during October, including this one. More details down below. What am I shilling for today, I hear you ask? Do you hate it when people steal all of your money and your house over the internet? I know I do. NordVPN may have been invented by wizards to help protect your personal data from the prying eyes of the dark web, a sinister cabal of technomancers that grow in power the more they know about your browsing habits. The true story of NordVPN's origins are unknown and lost to the ages, and without using facts. No one really knows how it provides more accessibility to otherwise censored websites or a safer security experience for all that use it. All I know is that it does and that when you sign up to it, the power level of my bank account grows and I use it and maybe you should too.